Welcome back to the channel, Captain Chad Gabs at your service. This is TFE TV. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've been trying to put out daily content, but I've, I've been posting shorts, but it kind of doesn't count towards like watch time hours. And of course, I'm on the path to becoming monetized on YouTube, which is a big goal of mine, a big dream of mine, and I'm not anywhere near getting to that point. So I'm, I'm just trying to stay as consistent as I can so that one day we can get there. Just want to give a quick shout out to the Pure Blood gang that watch my channel. Okay, you probably know what that is. You guys see those uh you guys see those freaking profile pictures, you know, of people announcing that they got the jizz nerve. <laughs> well, this was my rebuttal to that. I don't know if you could read that. I don't know if it's backwards, but it's like I got my dirt 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 and I'm like, "Well, guess what I didn't get?" <laughs> guys, I didn't have anything particularly planned for this video, so I thought maybe, "Hey pig, give me I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit about how I got my dog and, you know, she's the reason that you're even watching this video right now. And I don't think I've ever quite made like a formal video talking about, you know, how I got her and, and, and a little bit of the journey and the process in between time. Um, hi. <laughs> I think she was just asking for a smooch. I'm not exactly sure what she's doing right now. She's kind of just giving me the eye. Do you, is it the I love you I? Like, it is because you love your daddy? Does her love her papa? Okay, she loves her daddy. That's what that look is. So, the story goes, and there's all kinds of learning moments in this, because, you know, at the time, I didn't realize I was sort of contributing to the problem. You know, because if you're like, you know, if you're buying puppies off Craigslist, and it comes from like a backyard breeder, and if you don't know what a backyard breeder is, that's just somebody that is breeding their mutts, you know, not looking to, you know, backyard breeders not looking to like better the breed or nothing. They're looking to make money. Money is like the number one thing on the, on the priority list. It's, it's somebody putting out like, you know, I wouldn't say she's a bad product, but it's somebody that's not really, you know, specifically breeding to like better the breed. This is, she's a pit mix. There's a 5,000, there's a million pit mixes out there that, you know, aren't necessarily genetically sound now we got really lucky with rosie she's an unbelievable dog as a matter of fact the story goes i use her for my demo i use her um matter of fact i just used her today and i've used her a thousand times before in reference to you know introducing her to new dogs dogs that need a good positive experience dogs dogs that need to be checked sometimes you know you can't really use a dog to check another dog because a lot of dogs you know don't really know when to like let up and it becomes a, a problem injuries she'll be like yeah and like teach a dog a lesson without hurting them okay does that make sense um but anyway all that to say you know i didn't know that uh buying buying from some random person who bred their mutts together was sort of contributing to the you know overpopulation now in my particular situation you know yeah i might have gotten her i, I don't think i'll ever I know I won't ever purchase a dog for $200 on Craigslist from somebody breeding in their backyard, not for temperament, not for health, not for money, okay? No health testing. Uh, they don't care about anything except making a couple hundred bucks. And that's just, you know, we got an issue. We don't need to be adding more pit mixes and not monitoring where they're going, you know? I even, like, they, she was asking, like, down... She was asking for more than I gave her. I'm going to let Rosie chill. She was asking for more than I gave her. It's like a real breeder putting out a good product is not going to like haggle. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is good blood and uh, anything ever happened, you know, a good breeder, like if, if I were to hit up the person I got her from and be like, Hey, I'm not happy. She'd be like, shit out of luck. Your problem. A good breeder will take the dog back. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, like, there's a big difference between the two there. Amongst a bunch of other things. I don't really want to get into the specifics, but I kind of have uh, to a, a small degree. Um, difference between backyard breeders and ethical breeders could probably make a whole video on that. But uh, I wouldn't change it for the world, you know. This dog changed my life, you know, significantly. She came into my life right at the point that I retired from professional baseball and I was like having a, an identity crisis and I really needed something to be pumped up about because every day at that point was just a big drag. You know, I don't want to be, you know, tell you this sob story, but like 
you know, you're looking for purpose, you're looking for identity when you just got done losing all of that, you know, kind of in a bad space. I won't say I was ever like depressed or anything like that because I found joy in whatever I could. As a matter of fact, I had a girlfriend at the time that I got her with. And um, yeah, I was in like a ha- nice little happy space at that point. But I was working construction and uh, I just needed something to like light me back up. You know, I wasn't really fully happy. Um, and Rosie kind of filled that void for me. And, you know, at the time, obviously, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I had never really had my own dog before. So Rosie was the dog that really taught me in all the spaces that I was uh, insufficient. I was coming up short. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't create trainers. She was ruining my apartment. I, was, uh, I wasn't training her. You know, all the things that I know now, I wish I knew then. But I wouldn't have figured those things out without, you know, making all the mistakes first. And I think that's a really important thing to think about if you're also... You know, at that stage with your dog where you may you feel like you don't really have all the answers, you feel like you might be messing up. I think the important thing is um, identifying that and just starting to be proactive in, in doing something um, to, to help that out. Because what happens is, is life just ends up getting a lot better together when you guys have like a curriculum, when you have some routine, when you guys are on the same page and when you guys have good communication. Very similar to like relationships in life as well with, with human people. It's like if you don't have a good communication system with people, it's probably going to be really difficult to interact with each other. It's probably going to you know, create friction, problems, frustration, and all the same sort of things happen when you don't really know what you're doing in reference to you know, creating that relationship with your dog. And you know, none of it's really brain bursting. You know, I just think you don't know until you know. And then when you start to learn you know, all the things that you were doing wrong, you're like... <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Very practical information. I think if you're going to a good dog trainer, they're going to break everything down for you in a very simple way because you're just a pet dog owner looking to create a better foundation for your relationship with your dog. And that doesn't really entail a whole lot of brain busting things. I think the most important thing to think about is if you change the way you think about things, you're going to change the way you live. And that goes for, you know, a multitude of things in life. You know, change the way you think about you know, taking care of yourself and what's important in in regards to that. Start going to the gym, start changing the way you think in terms of what you're eating and all these things. Your life is going to improve exponentially. And that's exactly what happens with you and your dog. Once you start to actually incorporate a rule set, some boundaries, some structure, you understand, you know, the patterns and the associations and all the things that, you know, how to teach your dog and like how they learn and, just through that process, your relationship improves because you're spending now, instead of just spending aimless time, your dog learning all these really bad habits and bad behaviors right underneath your nose, you're now spending the quality, productive time together learning all the good things, the pre- pre- preventing the dog from you know, continuing in their bad habits and all the things that you end up getting really frustrated by. And this is the process that I went, with, went through with her that really, you know, and of course, you know, I have to press rewind a little bit. Like I didn't know all of that until I met Kyla, my wife, you know, I have my wife to credit for that because she was a dog trainer when I met her and she was the one that really pointed out, dude, like this, 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 and this. And that's like what gave me the motivation and gave me the inspiration. And it really, that was the thing that I sort of latched onto, you know, when I needed it, when I needed something the most, you know, Um, I was really searching for that thing that I could be excited about because at that point I didn't really have anything to be excited about. So when I started to see these results with her, I became obsessed. And this is when I, this is something that I preach to my clients and anybody that's considering to come uh, for my training program, you're not going to get anywhere special unless you really become obsessed and committed and dedicated to get these things, you know, because there's no substitution for the amount of repetition and effort that needs to be put forth in order to get there. You know, you can't just like wake up one day and say, hey, you know, I want to do some training today and then put the dog on the shelf for, you know, a week and then go back to it. Like it's an everyday effort. It's an everyday effort. And expectation versus reality. Expectation, dog goes to training for three weeks, comes back a little bit better, expecting the dog to just be perfect from then on out unrealistic the reality is the dog trainer gives you a head start the dog trainer is selling you the curriculum the dog trainer is giving you the head start and selling you the formula as i said i don't sell perfect dogs by the time they go home they're still dogs they're still going to have their personality they're still going to have their quirks 
they would have been held accountable here. They would have gotten a good head start and at least had the information delivered to them. Create training, all the behaviors, sit down, stay, come, heal, no, off, all the things, you know, the structure, which is like ultimately the most important thing about all this stuff. And these are the things that, you know, I started to learn and I started to see the difference. And I think this was the experience that I needed, you know, ultimately to get to the point where I was comfortable, you know, taking money from people to do this for a living. Now, of course, as soon as I saw what I could do with Rosie, I didn't just say, hey, I'm a dog trainer now. I practiced on all sorts of different dogs, different behaviors, started pulling dogs out of the shelter, kind of like I'm about to go do again tomorrow for like, you know, the thousandth time. But that was put on the back burner for a long time while I got my business going, but I just kind of have that in my heart to do that. So we are going to be doing that. If you guys want to watch that, just tap in, you know, subscribe to the channel if you're still watching at this point because um, that's going down tomorrow. I'm going to go get a, a, a Dutch Shepherd out of there and see if we can't rehab him back to what he should be. But anyway, yeah, Rosie changed my life, man. She changed my life. She gave me purpose, and she gave me a reason to, to have my eyes lit up and so something to work towards, you know. And um, here we are. You know, I would never have imagined that she would be the face of a company um, that does, you know, we do, we do... <laughs> I don't want to get into brass taxes, but we do well now, you know, and um, never in a million years. When I met Kyla, my wife, who introduced me to all this stuff, I didn't, I, I could, t I could hand on a Bible, tell you that I didn't realize that dog training was a profession, you know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know people train dogs, you know, but it's, um, the industry is getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, I pride myself in being, you know, one of the best to do it, you know, and, and what, what, what determines the best Subscribe because I'm going to make a whole video on what I believe is the best possible approach, the most appropriate, the most effective, and quite frankly, the most desirable because this is very precious cargo we're, we're dealing with. And to have a extraordinarily heavy hand in this industry, I just don't find it to be necessary. I feel like that's for lazy insufficient and talentless people now that's not to say i don't believe in the corrections and the physical pressure when needed i'm just saying i know how a lot of people do it and i know how a lot of people get a lot of quick results learned helplessness not my style i'm a relationship guy rosie changed my life i changed her life we've changed thousands of other lives because we focused on the relationship first and that doesn't involve having a fist hovering over a shoulder, dogs waiting to be punched. That's not the, that's not the, my other baby snoring right now. <laughs> I love her so much. And I love you guys. Thank you for listening to a little bit of my story. I know it was probably all over the place. There she is, Rosie the Pit, little backyard bred, pity mutt. Absolutely most incredible dog I'll ever have. The most biggest impact a dog will ever have on my life nothing will ever even come close to it because of where we were and to and to where we are all because of her and people people try to say it's just a dog no she's my best friend and she's my savior i love you guys thank you for watching my videos if you could leave a thumbs up on the video if you watch the whole thing i would really appreciate it we'll see you guys next time peace